Be sure to check out all of our interviews at athletesangle.com, where you can also find the podcast from all of our past episodes, as well as blogs about the show, including Take 5. We talking about practice. Not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. I don't really think that me breaking Jerry Rice's record was special. Um, I think shutting you guys up is really what made it special. All right, I'm joined now by Tom Maxwell of the Manitoba Moose. Uh, tell me, maybe give us a quick overview of your path to get to the Manitoba Moose in your career. I'm from uh, Spokane, Washington, so it was always my dream to play for the Chiefs there in my hometown, but uh, it didn't work out, so I went to Medicine Hat and played for the Tigers for four years, and it's probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. I mean, we went to the Mem Cup my second year and, um, you know, had a, had a really good career there and uh, went to Phoenix my first year in the coast and uh, played there, and then uh, my next year I played in Hershey, got a, had a wrist injury, and then uh, was traded from Hershey here and been here ever since. Oh, right on. How would you define uh, your role with the Moose right now? I mean, I, I'm uh, you know, a fourth-line right winger, and I think my job is to bring energy and physical play and uh, you know, stand up for my teammates if that's, uh, if that's what's needed. So um, that's been my role for a while now, and uh, I enjoy it. As a guy that has to stand up for your teammates uh, pretty often, how do you uh, develop yourself to be in that role? I don't know. I think uh, it was. It started when I was 16 or 17 in Medicine Hat, and I wasn't playing as much. And I kind of figured that if I, I went out there and started fighting, and uh, that I'd get more chance to play. And uh, you know, it kind of worked out. I fought guys that were my age and my size, and then I just kind of moved up from there. As a as an enforcer, we'll say, uh, what kind of coaching is there to develop that skill set that's required to fill that role? I don't know. I mean, I think it's it's mainly just. Uh, being willing to uh, to actually do it, to actually show up, and I mean, you know, some guys take boxing in the summer and um, stuff like that. But uh, I just work on my strength, and I took some boxing lessons this summer, and um, it's just kind of the willingness to do it. Interesting. Well, let's uh, talk about the actual fighting in hockey. Uh, a lot of guys are designated as fighters. How how do they measure their contributions to the game? Um, you know, I think uh, some guys are can play more than others. I mean, you see guys like. You know, like a Chris Neal who, you know, scores 15, 20 goals a year and, and still is one of the toughest guys in the league. And, um, you know, that's what I want to be. I want to be somebody who can play the game as well as, um, as you know, be a physical presence out there. And I don't want to just play one or two shifts a night and, you know, one of those shifts go out and get in a fight. So um, every day in practice, I'm trying to work on my skills and trying to get better as a hockey player, not just a fighter. So then if uh, throughout a game, what would define your game as being successful or having a bad game then? Because you're not looking for 40 goals a year. How do you measure your success in, from a game-to-game -game basis? I think you just got to focus on, uh, like, for me, what's really important is my D zone and um, make sure I'm getting pucks out on the wall and no turnovers. And, and then if I get into the, uh, on the forecheck, just a lot of physical, physical plays, a lot of hits. And, um, you know, and if, if a fight comes along, then... Uh, then it's my job to you know figure out if it's right for the team or if it's right for momentum and uh, kind of go from there. Okay, so when you're def trying to figure out when the right time is for a fight, how often are you instigating and how often do you retaliate? You know, I think a lot of the times um, w with me, um, a fight starts just because I get in the forecheck and and uh, hammer one of the D-men and then one of their guys kind of chases me around. So, um, I, you know, I Scott O'Neill kind of told me that he didn't really like the the squaring off and going to center ice and making it look like a boxing match. He'd rather it be heat of the moment. And uh, so that's what I've tried to work on. And so a lot of the times it's just me being out there and hitting guys and then having guys stand up for their own teammates. Do you get a lot of that in the league where guys just try to tap you on the shin pad, say, hey, let's just go kind of thing? It's just kind of a premeditated, I'm the tough guy, you're the tough guy, let's do this? Yeah, I, I used to a lot uh, a lot in junior. That used to happen a lot. But I think now, um, you know, a lot of the guys are going more for the heat of the moment, um, you know, if they know who to fight, guys know who to fight if they're tough, but um, they don't go out looking for it as much as before face-offs, they, they look for it in the play. So. so is there a fighter etiquette in hockey, and what's the proper way to engage in a fight, or what are some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to fighting? I'd say probably the biggest don't is to hit a guy when he's down, or um, you know if he's falling down, 
to you know hit him with a cheap punch or something like that, or if the refs have him, um, don't punch him if his you know if his arms are held back. But um, other than that, I mean you know no no poking in the eye, no hair pulling, no stuff like that. But other than that, that's about it. So if you're going in as a into a fight or whatever, how do you in your mind stay safe as a fighter? And uh, what are the additional measures that should be taken maybe to help protect fighters in the junior and pro levels? I don't know. I mean, if fighting is a tough, uh, it's a tough job. You know, I mean, I, there's no way to really be safe out there doing it because, you know, it's, it's a, you never know what could happen. You know, I mean, you could be in a really good fight and each guy's throwing punches and each guy gets hit and then one guy just falls and hits his head on the ice and um, it could be bad for the rest of his life. So, it's just it's a it's a weird thing. It's kind of a fine line, but um, every time you fight, you're kind of taking your your health into your hands. So, in your mind, is fighting necessary in hockey? I think so. I mean, if it wasn't, I don't know if I'd have a job. But um, it's you know it's a huge momentum boost. You know, if you're down two nothing or something to a team, and the whole morale of your team is down, then um, you know if you go out there and there's a good fight, and it kind of shows the whole team that you know what no, we're not going to lay down here. We're not going to just uh, we're actually going to try to win this game, and uh, you know sometimes it turns games around for guys. So fighting a lot of the times is to help protect more of the skill set guys or whatever like that to make sure that they don't get guys taking runs at them and stuff like that. What in your mind would happen in hockey if they did take fighting out of it? I don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, you see, uh, I think a good example would be just to watch some college hockey. You know, you watch the NCAA, and there's no fighting, and they've got cages on, and they run around just like... Uh, it's just you know like monkeys with their heads cut off and uh, there's huge hits and um, and then they know that there's no going to be no repercussions so um, I think that's that's probably what it would be like close but uh, you know I don't know I, I wouldn't know unless it, it actually happened there's been a lot of scary injuries lately in hockey in the last couple of years with guys falling after fights and stuff like that and hitting their head on the ice how much does that affect you a guy who knows he's going to go out there probably every weekend and probably get one fight maybe two or whatever tussles in a weekend how does that affect your mindset it's kind of tough because, you know, last year um, we Jeff Waugh got in a fight and he was winning the fight the whole time and finally the guy that he was fighting said, you know, enough with this and picked him up and just dropped him right in his head and he was concussed and um, he was out for a while. So it's it's scary to see somebody that close to you have it happen to him. But, I mean, you just got to be pay attention. You know, you just got to figure out what, um, um, you know, how to be safe and if there's a point where you feel like you're, you know, you might be in a bad spot. Just kind of try to get yourself out of it. Who's the uh, toughest guy you've ever had to drop the gloves with? Um, it's a good question. I fought uh, that Derek England, who's in Pittsburgh now, who knocked out Colton Orr the other day. I uh, I fought Aaron Downey, who's <laughs> he's pretty strong and scary. Um, uh, Matt Cassian from Houston's pretty tough. So I don't know. I fought uh, fought a lot of times, and um, some are better than others. So. Yeah, no doubt. What makes a guy such a good fighter when you're on the ice? I think if you watch a guy like Rick Rippon, I mean, you never know where his next punch is going to come from. He, he's quick. He's he knows where he was trying to punch. His punches are on target all the time, and that's the toughest part. I mean, you you grab a guy and you think he's going to throw a couple of rights, and then all of a sudden he throws four lefts, and you're looking for the next punch. You try to grab his left, and all of a sudden he's throwing rights again. Um, I'd say he's probably pound for pound the toughest guy in the NHL right now just because you watch him fight it's like you know Muhammad Ali out there so um those are those are the toughest guys for me to fight now you said you started fighting when you were 16 years old what was the biggest challenge to go into fighting on the ice because it can't be the easiest thing in the world standing on skates I don't think people realize how tough actually fighting on ice is what was the biggest challenge in your mind when you first started fighting just yeah I guess that's probably about it just to try to stay up you know try to stay on your feet I mean it's tough to uh you got a guy pulling at you you got you're trying to push you're trying to pull I mean sometimes it looks like a mess if you see those guys who are who stand there like they're on on shoes um you know it's it's a tough thing to do it's a lot harder than it looks so um I guess probably that and then just uh you know trying to get hit in the face is the toughest part I mean getting used to that is uh is tough but once you get hit a couple times and you realize that it all feels about the same then uh you just kind of stick it out there. All right, thanks, Tommy, for joining us today. So there you have it, folks. Thanks for listening to Athletes Angle with Ryan Carrett here on 101.5 UMFM.